Well, hello and welcome to the PMQ Live Update for today, which is December 15th. It's a Tuesday. It's beautiful outside. Uh, well, maybe I take that back. It's getting kind of cold. I heard there's a big storm coming. Um, I'm not so much affected down here in Mississippi, but my guest today might be. We have Dan Uccello of Flo's Restaurant Group up in Michigan and also Nathan Buclair of uh, Burkett Restaurant Equipment and Supplies. And you are in the Ohio area, correct? Correct. Northwest Ohio. Perrysburg. All right, so you guys are going to be getting any kind of Arctic weather coming over there from this big uh, nor'easter, as they call it? Nothing here. They're expecting like an inch of snow. Everything's probably 300 miles east of here. So, so far, we're pretty lucky. But personally, I'd love to have it. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Um, I am not made for the snow, so... We're going to hope that it holds off as long as possible here in Michigan. Well, I mean, you chose to live in Michigan, so that might be your fault. But, uh, you know, we'll just – we'll put it there. Now, we do have a little bit of echo, so it might be muting us every now and then. Dan, if you can maybe just move your camera a little bit down and put your face up higher. Beautiful. All right, so today, folks, uh, I, I did want – I have two of these guests today because uh, there's something that's coming up here. Um, even in the whole pandemic and the situation that we're having, people are still opening restaurants and or opening new units of an existing operation. Um, one of the big main things that you need is you can have a building, you have the shell, but you need the energy, you need your equipment and supplies and all this stuff. And there are some changes that are coming up in 2021. So I wanted to get somebody who works in that market um, in, the, in the shape of – Nathan Buclair, and somebody who needs to get that sort of equipment in the shape of Dan Uccello. So, um, Dan, why don't you go ahead and give us a quick rundown about who you are. I'll give you like a minute, just who you are and what you do. Sure. So, my name is Dan Uccello. I'm the president of Flow's Collection. We are a small restaurant group with four restaurants and uh, also a catering company located uh, throughout West Michigan. Um we are a 10 year old company. We've been around uh, since 2011 and we've evolved into uh, three different concepts uh, as well as a full service catering company. It's great. Uh, I like how you stuck down to that, uh, that minute timeline. So um, Nathan, why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Well, my name is Nathan Buclair. I'm account executive with Burkett Restaurant Equipment. I've been with the company for about eight years, uh, working in the inside sales team and the showroom sales team, and more recently in our business development, which really focuses on helping customers build new restaurants, build new business, whether it's food service, uh, it could be anything from a pizzeria to you know, a school project, uh, hotels. Uh, we service all across the country, uh, so we're national, basically one-stop shop for all your food service needs. So uh, as you can see on the website, we try to keep everything available and all the top nationally recognized brands. So that way, you know, when it comes to service, you know, the biggest thing for me is service. Uh, it's not just about making the sale today. It's about helping that customer today, tomorrow, the next day. And if something happens, nationally recognized brands really do help uh, in post-sale type environments. So if something happens, we want to make sure it's taken care of right away. And I know Dan, right. you I, back that part up too. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, because it is, like I said, you can only uh, get so far. Even if you have a building, you need the equipment and and supplies to actually make sure that you're you're cuisines are getting out to the public. So um, I guess this question here is for Nathan um, and maybe something if Dan, you've got your ear to the ground as well, but I'm going to ask Nathan first. There are some uh, changes in the restaurant equipment market coming up in 2021 uh, that you've mentioned. Um, and I want to let everybody know uh, about it. And now for anybody who's actually watching, I did want to let you know that you can uh, ask your questions and comments here live in the Facebook comments. Uh, we'll get to them. We'll put them up on screen and Dan or Nathan can actually answer them live. So be feel free, feel free to interact with us. We love the more the merrier. So um, what are you hearing as far as the change in the market for 2021, as far as equipment supplies and rest and, and uh, well, equipment and supplies for the restaurant industry, Nathan? Well, the biggest thing more recently is we're starting to get a lot of uh, vendor information regarding price increasing, which 
that's going to be the biggest factor. So we're seeing anything from 3% to 20% price increases coming. Um, and that's starting anywhere from January 1st going through March 1st. So you, that first quarter of next year, we'll start to see some drastic price changes. Uh, we're trying to get as much in as possible, working with certain vendors to uh, see what we can do to help out. But with COVID, and, and I know we're going, we'll probably get into that here in a few minutes, but that has been a huge impact for labor costs, raw material costs. So pricing is definitely the, the bigger impact we're seeing for 2021. Now, um, you were saying you're kind of looking at getting some uh, preparing for it, or if you get some equipment in, are some of these prices going to be locked in before the prices go up? Is it going to reflect the prices you get it at? Is that going to be reflected in the cost to the consumer? Yeah, yeah, a lot of that's going to be reflected. So, you know, we, we always try to be as transparent as possible with all of our customers. So, if the price goes up next year, if, if there's something I've got in stock that I can help a customer out, I will. So, whatever we can do to help minimize that impact we will definitely do that and help uh, but yeah definitely if anybody's looking to get any orders and do it soon before uh, some of these impacts hit okay dan what have you heard as an operator you've got several units now too and um with no plans on really stopping maybe slow down a bit but what have you heard just uh you know from the man on the street that's pretty you know nathan pretty much uh, nailed it um COVID, I think, uh, had so many manufacturing, caused so many manufacturing issues with employees that, um, you know, a lot of these manufacturers haven't had really a chance to produce maybe as many as many pieces that they wanted to. But also, um, I if it's anything like our industry, we've had to pay people a little bit more just to keep them employed. Um, so I've, I've heard the same exact thing that Nathan has heard that uh, we're about to we're about due for a huge price increase in 2021. Well, and I guess the, the overall message here is uh, just kind of get ahead of the curve. Um, you know, it's never too early to start to plan for new business, but, uh, you know, be aware of the lead times going into 2021. And I guess, like Nathan said right there succinctly, do it now if you can. Yeah. And the other thing, too, with, you know, obviously there's price increases, but we talk about the labor forces. Lead times have been extended uh, quite a bit uh, over the last four to six months. We've seen things that range, used to range between two to three, max four weeks. Lead times on certain pieces of equipment now could take up to six to eight weeks. So, and, and Dan mentioned about, you know, manufacturers planning certain volume uh, already produced. Well, it, if they're not getting to it, some of these stock pieces are now taking longer than the normal one to two week lead time. You can see three to four. So plan ahead. Okay. So it isn't even about just, uh, you know, buying it before the prices go up. It's just, uh, just with the delay in, in production and shipment and stuff like that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's playing an impact. All right. Well, next question I want to ask, and I'm going to go to you, Dan, and I do have your Mike muted, so I'll have to remember to put that off. But like new versus used, and I'll ask you again, uh, Nathan, as well. But uh, Dan, what are your thoughts on new versus used equipment? Um, and I, you know, we're going to go into more detail about new versus used for a new operation or existing units. But uh, what what are your thoughts on that? How how would you go for somebody just starting out? So I can obviously only speak from experience, um, my personal experience. Um, Ten years ago, when we opened our first location. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of cash um, and uh, we ended up buying everything used, um, all of our refrigeration, um, all the mechanicals, all of our ovens, uh, uh, we all of our stainless steel tables, prep tables, all that good jazz. Uh, um, and it worked out. Uh, we, we saved a ton of money. It helped me get started. Um, and uh, I feel very lucky we have still a lot of that equipment working today 10 years later that i bought at auctions uh, or through um, ebay the used market everywhere that you can find it um however i try to repeat that on our second location um and it didn't go well uh, and that uh that kind of put a stop to us after the second location to buy things used we will buy ovens things that are mechanical we will buy used uh when we can um, but uh, refrigeration, we definitely won't 
go down that path again. It's uh, it's really, really hard to get good used refrigeration. Um, and uh, we've been doing business with Burkett now and uh, they've been just great. I mean, yes, you may spend a little bit more money and I understand sometimes, uh, you know, when you're first getting started, you may not have that kind of money. Um, but uh, so you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but you know, my biggest recommendation is stay away from refrigeration unused. Uh, anything else, most of the times you'll be okay. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want a seamless operation when you're getting started so that you can really focus on what we do as restaurateurs, and that's preparing for the grand openings, um, you know, making, uh, making sure that our food quality is there, making sure that our employees are trained. This is where Burkett comes in. This is where you hire a company like Burkett. They come in. They help you from step one all the way to the last step, and uh, and, and they're just a, they were a huge asset to us. Uh, we keep we plan on keep using them for for the future. They know what we want. They know what we like. Um, so used and new. There's benefits on both, but I would I would not recommend buying any refrigeration used ever. Okay, and well, and I, you know, that's a, definitely a great tip. If you're going to get something, that, if that refrigerator goes down or they're cooler, you're kind of screwed for the day sometimes. Um, Nathan, what do you think as far as like he always says, get refrigeration new? What What are some of the best things people can get used? Or to, if not to save a dollar, but, you know, that something that's very reliable that they can get used. Yeah, Dan, Dan made some really good points. Um, his experience is what we have seen being a, a used slash reconditioned dealer in the industry for uh, many, many years. We have a lot of experience seeing the different brands come through our service department and, and how they hold up. So refrigeration, as far as product categories are concerned, refrigeration is tough. Refrigeration is your lifeblood. Uh, yeah. of your restaurant. Uh, you're talking your walk-in coolers to your, your pizza makeup lines. These are the types of things you don't want those to go down. So if you've got a used piece of equipment, there's a lot more uh, probability that something could happen and you don't want to lose product because not only are you losing the machine and service and time, but you're potentially losing the cost of your products, your, your cheeses, meats, and whatnot that's stored in those. Uh, when it comes to what to look into that is used, anything really damaged mechanicals, your pizza ovens, you really, there's not a whole lot to go wrong when it comes to pizza ovens, whether it's a conveyor oven, a deck oven, uh, those are all great options. Uh, if you can get them used, and that's one thing we do a great job reconditioning those pieces. We've had decades of experience reconditioning uh, some of the most popular, some of the Middleby Marshall, the PS360, as you can see, uh, we've got a 220 there uh, on our site. But, you know, PS360 conveyor oven, you can pick up for, you know, $14,000, dollars where a brand new, similar style, you know, that particular one's a little bit less money, it's a smaller oven, but a brand new equivalent oven is going to cost you in the 30s. So, okay. So yeah, when you're a new operator, you're trying to get started. Save, you can save, definitely save some money on used equipment and on the ovens. So take that experience there and, and run and get that used oven, save some money, put it somewhere else. Yeah, and then that's, uh, you know, I like what you're saying there is that um, these are things you can get reliably, not reliably used, but refurbished too. And that's something that Burkett offers and other places might offer as well. And we actually do have a video later where it shows you guys actually um, at the end of this, we'll play this for anybody who stuck around to, to let them see what Burkett actually does. But Dan, I wanted to jump back to you real quick. I had something that I was going to do called the, uh, the flows files by Dan Uccello. Cause I have a whole section of highlighted questions here about um, you already mentioned that you got your used equipment for the first time around and it worked out, but the second time around, not so much. So you're going uh, into uh, new for anything. So that, I think that kind of uh, goes forward as far as like, if you're opening up another unit, um, why don't you talk about the expansion uh, expanding in the year during this pandemic? Cause I know you've, you've actually done that, but um, let us know what that's about and what people kind of can expect, hopefully to a lesser degree in 2021. So I, um, we, 
we feel we're very aggressive when it comes to business. We don't turn down a deal. Um, we definitely don't turn down a meeting uh, when it comes to uh, a possible acquisition. Um, so 2021 is going to be a very interesting year. Uh, we really have no idea what's coming. We don't know what the economy is looking like. But what we do know is that we are in the perfect business. Uh, pizza is what I would say it's uh, it, it's made for this. Uh, I mean, pizza travels great. Uh, so we we're looking at expansion for 2021. Um, we feel that um, takeout delivery pizzerias are definitely going to be the next hot thing while we get through this uh, pandemic. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on next year is uh, try to uh, expand into a little bit more into that. Um, three out of our four operations are full service. This year has been really tough for those. Uh, we've been uh, shut down for a total of uh, four and a half months. Um, and on and off. But um, that's been really tough. But one thing that has kept us really going is still our takeout for pizza. I mean, you can't beat it. We we also deliver. Um, but um, we, we, we don't feel that 2021 is going to be a year where, uh, at least for our company, where any of our stores are going to close. We, um, we are, of course, not uh, in the greatest spot when it comes to our, our dine-in restaurants. However, our uh, takeout and delivery spot, we're, we're up in the upwards of 80% from last year. And that's because a lot of uh, dine-in restaurants are closed. So uh, we're, we're picking up uh, a lot of traction in those, but uh, we're, we're really just looking forward to 2021 and expanding that concept, which is just takeout and delivery, no dine-in. Um, and, uh, and I think it's going to do really well for us. We're not looking to build them from scratch. Um, we're looking to possibly getting into uh, some existing other pizzerias, whether it's somebody who's selling, some a location that went out of business. Um, most pizzerias are set up uh, pretty close to the same on the inside. So that that's what we're looking to do to keep our costs down um, is to get into something of that matter. Well, and that actually brings me to another question uh sorry i'm you for two seconds um is that uh one of your uh, is always work smarter not harder delegate some of those tasks out now there is um there's that question of uh infrastructure getting a, a restaurant that already has the equipment inside versus actually you know building it out um would that be affected and do you think in the in the cost for the like real estate prices uh, if there's already that uh, equipment there, do you think landlords are going to realize that the price has gone up and adjust that? Or, I mean, if you if you're looking, oh, I'm sorry, hold on a sec. There you go. Go ahead, Dan. Um, I don't think it's going to uh, really affect the real estate market, quite honestly. Um, however, what's going to happen is that uh, these places that possibly went out of business. Uh, they're going to have uh, they're going to have a lease to um, essentially pay off. So, in order to pay that lease off, a lot of those places will leave uh, equipment behind to kind of make up for that. Which then it gives the leverage on the landlord to um, to to be um, to be the landlord that can turn that can provide a turnkey operation for that next uh, restaurant tour that wants to get in. So. Um, on the landlord side, although it stinks to lose a tenant, um, but uh, I, I do think that there's going to be a lot of opportunities next year coming up where you're going to have a lot of turnkey restaurants, uh, uh, whether it's pizzerias or dining, uh, coming up where the landlord has no choice but to try to lease it for uh, a little bit of a less of a profit, but provide mm -hmm. a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, opportunities. Well, that, that was another question I had. Actually, it was going to be the first one. The lead into that was, uh, you know, have real estate prices been affected in 2021? Because I know you do a lot of work with trying to get new buildings and stuff like that and whatever else you have your fingers in. But I mean, have you have you noticed that at all as far as real estate prices being affected at all? No, if anything, real estate right now, I can only speak for Michigan. That's the only, uh, West Michigan, I should say. That's the only area really where we own real estate. Um it's through the roof. I mean, right now to this day, you still can't buy real estate at a decent price. It's, uh, it's so expensive, whether you're talking about commercial or whether you're talking mm -hmm. about, um, residential. So as of right now, I don't see it being affected, but that could also change next year. 
Okay, so just to be clear, um, it, it hasn't brought down any of the prices, but with like desperate landlords trying to release some of these places. No, no, not not here in West Michigan. Um, okay, not at all. All right, so uh, jumping in, I'm trying to add back, uh, Mr. Nathan Buclair. There he is. Uh, you know, I, what what are you seeing as far as like working with landlords and and tenants? Do you, do you have uh, some landlords who have maybe foreclosed or like some tenants who have left and left the equipment and landlords selling the prices? How does that? How does this market now affect the buyback value of some of this equipment? So, I mean, as far as the values, I mean, to an end user, that price is probably going to go up a little bit because there's, well, actually down because there's going to be a larger supply. So people are going to be dumping uh, some of their equipment relatively inexpensive. Just the caution is to be very careful. We don't know the, you don't know what the condition is of that equipment. You don't know if it was used and abused. A lot of the stuff goes through an auction site and you're buying as is. Um, mm -hmm. Like we mentioned, like Dan mentioned earlier, there's there's pros and cons buying used. A lot of it is in dollar savings. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of instances where a customer tried to save money buying a used piece of equipment and they end up spending more than the cost of a new unit just trying to get it repaired and, and up to speed. So uh, just be cautious buying used through auction and, and so auction sites and uh, from foreclosures, definitely recommend getting that through a a used dealer such as Burkett. So that way, you know that somebody's put their hands on it, tested it, replaced parts and components to ensure that it's going to work. Plus, we're going to back that with a 90 day warranty. Uh, so that way, you've got a little bit better peace of mind that you've got a better quality product. Okay, well, um, so let me ask Dan this real quick. Uh, somebody who's opened numerous uh, locations, uh, what should someone look for in a in an equipment distributor? I mean, what are you looking for when you're looking for new equipment? So we are always looking for is uh, now we're to a point where we understand obviously the development from step one all the way to the last step. But if you're just getting into it, what you should be looking for is somebody who can help you with the design of your kitchen and dining room, which Burkett, I believe, offers that uh, um, that service for a fee. Um, that helped me out the first couple locations uh, because uh, there's the basic understanding of what the health department wants in the kitchen, you know, how many feet uh, from each other should be a hand sink uh, and so on. Um, but uh, so that's one thing you should be looking for is a, a company that can help you with a design. Um, but uh, really it's all of the support that they're able to be, be able to provide you. Um, I mean, I remember the first project that I did uh, with Nathan, um, you know, it was every day he's giving me updates. You know, he's telling me if something is running behind, if we're running ahead of schedule, um, if uh, we encounter an issue with shipping. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever company you choose, that you're choosing somebody that uh, can, uh, that you can communicate okay, well with. Yeah, Go ahead, Dan, uh, you were going to be the next. <laughs> no, I was just saying that the biggest thing is just find somebody that you can connect with. It, it's not about saying, I want to work with XYZ company because they're the largest and they should know what to do. I'm not going to work with a small guy because, you know, with ABC company because they're the cheapest price. I want to work with somebody that I know and trust and build a relationship with. Uh, the biggest thing is just understanding that you're going to have that communication. And like Dan mentioned, when something happens that you're very open about it and you become friends, you become partners, you're not just a, a business transaction. So it's finding that click to know that your business partner, who is your rest, your equipment dealer, is going to be there to support. Uh, through every stage of opening the business. So uh, whether it's through the design process where we're going through the layout and the flow, how the product's going to come in back door, all the way going out the front for takeout delivery services uh, and all the storage. So we're there to help all along the way. Make sure the designs work, work with the architects, the general contractors through the build outs and the project management while the equipment's being installed. And then obviously then once the equipment's up and running and you become 
a business owner and making profits. Yeah, and that's and that's why I was showing some pictures here just real quick. Um, and I'm gonna get into some more too. But this is uh, some of the equipment that uh, Flows has actually got for me. I know I'm hiding behind my logo there, but I love this uh, this meat slicer, this globe. Um, I mean, this and this is something I don't know if they got new or used, but um, also this, uh, you guys helped them with this wood stone, the, the, the dual heat. Um, and I guess Dan, he said that you got that um, tiled. It's a beautiful red tile, my friend. But it, I mean, it's a it's a large deck. What do you got? Like ninety six inches there. I believe I believe that's the biggest one they make. So yeah. <laughs> um, it's a huge oven. Uh, I mean, it does great with the capacity that we are trying to push at that location. Um, and the beautiful thing about these ovens is that uh, you can literally, it's not just for pizza. We cook meats in, inside this thing. We put chicken, uh, potatoes, anything that you could imagine of, ve roasted veggies. Um, these ovens are, they're just, to me, top of the line. And, uh, and Burkett, I mean, uh, Nathan knows about this oven. And, uh, you know, we get up on site and uh, guess what? There's not a hole inside that building that we could put this oven through. And uh, <laughs> we we literally had to bust out a wall, an exterior wall to get this oven through. So, um, yeah, it, I mean, it was a fun project to, uh, to work with Burkett. And, uh, but, you know, the most important part was that they were there every step of the way. I mean, Nathan even came on site, which was very, I was very impressed by. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, they, that, you just got to look for somebody who has your back and that can really work with you as a partner in, uh, in, in the yeah, whole, yeah. you know, path to, to grand opening. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. another thing. That that I trying oh, to go ahead, Nathan. And why have one more stress factor when we can help take that stress off your back? Yeah. Another thing right there. <laughs> stress is nothing we need right now, especially at this time. <laughs> Um, I did want to ask that uh, I, I think Dan touched on this too a little bit about like, uh, you know, floor plans. I mean, is this something that a good distributor of any kind of purveyor of equipment should know is how to come up with a floor plan or, you know, obviously know the specs of your equipment, but maybe be able to help um, the, the pizzeria kind of figure out placement of their equipment? Is that something that uh, you think it should be? I decided it's something that Burkett does, right, Nathan? But I mean, is it something that everybody should do? Uh, whether it's for everyone, I, there are certain dealers that offer this service. Um, most of your, your seasoned veterans within the industry will have a good idea and understanding of what should be done within the business. Because the last thing anybody wants is to have equipment, to have any type of product returned. Uh, with us, we, have, we work with a lot of the you know, local health codes and the health departments and understanding what goes where, where should a hand sink be located? Where should the mop sink be located? And those are factors that can play, uh, they can really change the game when it comes to designing the flow of any sort of kitchen. So work with the local health department, fire marshals and understanding what, what do I need to do? And unfortunately there's not one code that works across the country that I've worked in projects uh, with Dan up in Grand Rapids area, in Western Michigan, I've done projects in Des Moines, Iowa, and it's different all across, whether you're in Michigan or Iowa or in Florida or California. So understanding what those are and familiarizing yourself with those codes. So that way we can uh, structure the business to work and comply with everyone. Well, and that's, I mean, it, it It sounds like that when somebody's looking for a distributor um, of equipment and supplies, they should be asking these questions. Um, are you guys familiar with whatever regional codes we have? Can you maybe do floor plans or help assist us with that? Dan, What when you're looking for something, when you were first starting out, maybe not when you were first starting out, um, now that you've got a few under your belt, what could you say are the first two to three questions somebody should ask of a distributor when they're trying to um, populate their, their operation with equipment? So if you're unfamiliar with all the health codes, which they're really hard to obviously be fully familiar with, uh, um, especially 
when it comes to uh, kitchens uh, that you're actually developing. Um, that would be my first question is, can you do a drawing for me? Can you help me draw? Uh, you know, obviously us as restaurateurs, we're going to know um, what equipment we want where, you know, whether we're on a saute station, which means we need a cooler by it and so on, because we know best as the cooks, as the, the, the restaurateurs. Um, but we, what we don't know is, you know, things like, floor drains, uh, things like um, hand sinks, uh, you know, how much, uh, how big of a makeup air unit do you need um, for the space that you have? And that's where you work with the fire marshal. That's where you work with um, the health department. And those are all done through your uh, suppliers, such as Burkett. Um, so that would be my first question. And, uh, and most distributors that have a good reputation, whether they're large or small, they do those kind of services. So um, that should be almost a red flag if they don't even offer that service that, you know, you probably shouldn't go with them. Um, second thing is what kind of, what brand of equipment are you looking for? You know, there's plenty of distributors out there that will sell you, um, you know, the cheapest stuff on the market, you know, just to come under budget, so to speak. But uh, um, that's basically throwaway equipment. You're going to use it for a year or two and it will break on you and it's going to cost too much money to fix. So you're going to buy new. So what brand are you using? I'm a huge fan on refrigeration of True. Um, that is, and Nathan knows that we bought everything of that brand. We've always had great luck with it throughout the years um and uh, so i would always ask what brands you uh they offer um and uh and, and and then the last thing is obviously how is your uh um the, what, what is the warranty you know is it 90 days is it a year what kind of uh, support are you going to provide me for during the, that warranty uh time um and uh and nathan can go into a little bit more of with what the warranty looks like at Burkett, but uh, I know that Nathan helped me out. I mean, things happen, you know, you can buy top of the line, there's a faulty pilot on a stove, whatever it may be, things do happen. So um, that would be my main question to that, uh, to that supplier is, what, uh, you know, how, can, how are you going to help me the first year in business when we are just gonna be so focused on the operation that I don't have to worry about what happens if a pilot goes out on my oven or whatever? Um, and um, and to me, that's really important to be able to have that phone number, that contact that I can just make a 30 second phone call and they take over from there. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that goes back to the um, just delegating work smarter, not harder. Um, it just if, if I'm sorry, I had to mute you. I hurt myself. I hate listening to myself. But uh, yeah, it's if you know, it's if you can find these people who can help you do that without you having to worry about it. That's one less thing on your plate so you can make your business successful. Um, Nathan, I mean, I understand that it's like in any distributor, that's what you're looking for. Somebody who can stand behind the product, whether it's new or used and whether or not they make it or they are just a distributor of it. I mean, is that, I assume that would be one of the first questions you want to ask is like, how do you stand behind your product? Yeah, and the, like most dealers, restaurant equipment dealers, we are distributing products that are manufactured from another company. You know, we showed a video earlier, whether it's South Bend, whether it's Blodgett or Woodstone, Captive Air for the hood systems, we Burkett, we're not the manufacturer. So the warranties, they all stand with the manufacturer of the equipment. And they back it up. We chose the manufacturers to partner with because they have a reputation in the industry. So when we're selling their product, we stand behind them, they stand behind us, and they stand behind their product. So the nice part is we always know that if something should happen, because we know in this industry something's going to happen. I'm sorry. Nothing has nothing is flawless. You could buy a brand new, I always use an automotive term, you could buy a brand new Bentley and spend $1.2 million, and something could happen to that product, to that car and you're gonna potentially need service work on it. So to know that I can make a quick phone call as a restaurateur, whether I call Burkett, I call my, my sales rep and they help me. Uh, many times, a lot of the manufacturers today, they're actually asking us not to go through us as the dealer for warranty. Uh, the manufacturers, what they wanna do is they wanna try to diagnose over the phone and do some troubleshooting. So that way, they know if they're going to send a service tech out that they're going to be able to fix it the first time. Many times, I'm sure Danny in his pad, in his 
in his experience, a lot of service companies, you would get billed two different trip charges because they'd come out one, the first time just to diagnose what was going on. And then they'd say, oh, sorry, I don't have the parts on my truck. Have to go back and order them and come back again. Well, there's $160 right there just in two trip charges. And on top of the cost of labor and, and parts material for that. So the manufacturers have gotten significantly better uh, in trying to diagnose over the phone technical support. So that way they're doing one trip, they're reducing their costs and, and warranty claims, uh, but they're taking care of the problem and they're taking care of it very fast. So making sure that whether it's the dealer, whatever company product brand that you're purchasing, Dan mentioned True Refrigeration, these companies all stand behind their product very well. They'll get you taken care of. All right. Uh, I mean, it's it's good information. These are great questions to be asking. These are some of the first things you should be asking whenever you're getting into the, uh, you know, buying equipment for it. Just have this stuff ready to rapid fire to anybody you're thinking about buying equipment from. Dan, why don't you give us um, just a final uh, I'm going to ask you guys two more questions, final tips and final affirmations, positive affirmations. So, Dan, what is your final tip for anybody either starting an operation or maybe um, adding another unit to their operation as far as buying equipment? Um, something maybe that you haven't told us, hopefully, but maybe there's something that you just want to reinforce. Um, I mean, it's business is all about planning and uh and do your research i mean if this is your first operation you may have been one of the best pizza makers in the country or the world um but i've never owned a a, a pizzeria or a restaurant that does not mean that because you were the best at uh, producing pizza that it will make you a great restaurant owner so do your homework and plan ahead um you know do your research uh which piece which brand of equipment is uh the most reliable and uh, uh which brand of the equipment has the best warranty um so again it, i can't express that ever to anybody trying to start a business enough do your research and plan 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 it, i mean there there is so many people who just jump in kind of like what i call head first and uh and then uh, they, they, they just, uh, you know, they get, they, they stand up and they have no idea where they're at, you know, so just plan ahead and uh, just make sure that you surround yourself with great partners, whether it's, uh, you know, a uh, equipment distributor or a food distributor, just uh, you need those partnerships to work really, really well, because at the end of the day, what you should be focusing on is how to run your business. They should be focusing on how to make sure that they run their business, which you know, if they do that great job, you, you're you going to benefit from it because you're not going to have to spend endless hours trying to figure out who's going to come fix that prep cooler because you have a great partner that is going to get a hold of the manufacturer. And within five, 10 minutes, you're going to have a call probably from the manufacturer. You're going to spend five, 10 minutes on the phone with the manufacturer, maybe trying to troubleshoot it over the phone. And then if you can't get it, they're going to send somebody out and, and you're done. You know, within 24 hours, your, your unit is going to be back up and running. But, and again, it sounds like hiring the best people. Always. All right. Well, uh, Nathan, uh, same question to you. Uh, what's a, a good tip, uh, just a final tip about anybody coming into the business uh, or maybe expanding? What, what should they look for in a distributor or equipment that they're doing or that they're getting, I should say? Yeah, th this industry uh, is, to me, it's very unique. Food service companies, whether uh, restaurateurs, whether it's pizzeria, whether it's any different segment of food service, everybody tends to be very friendly. If you have questions, reach out and ask. There is such a network of individuals that are willing to share experiences and knowledge. It is never too early to talk about what you would like to do as a new business owner. Sit down with a with a restaurant dealer such as Burkett or anybody that might be close that you know that you have references, and and learn about it. Dan mentioned, you know, don't come in hot headed. I, I, I use the term hot headed, thinking that you know everything and you're going to just kill it out of the gate. If you've never owned a business, just ask some questions, and look for the experiences. We're all here to help. We want to see you succeed, and. It, when you open a business, you're going to employ potentially my neighbor or my cousin 
or somebody else and help them. So ultimately you're helping my family, our families. So reach out, ask, just talk. There, there's, there's no cost in having a talk. Oh, I like that. And then uh, I did want to, um, I mean, don't be afraid to ask questions or ask for help even. Um, don't be prideful about it. Uh, if there, there are a lot of other people out there who know a lot more than me, you, anybody here. There's always somebody who knows more than you do. Um, and I did want to just show this video and then I'm going to get those final affirmations from you. It's less than two minutes, guys. So uh, just bear with me. But I mean, this actually shows, you know, what, how Burkett stands behind their equipment and what kind of gives you an example of what you should be asking for or looking for and anybody who does uh, any of your equipment distributors. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up here for you guys and uh, you should be able to hear it. What does it mean? To own a oh, of course you can't. You can't hear that. Can you hear Our it? Our service team takes great pride in the work we do, giving new life to used restaurant equipment to make a Burkett certified product. We care about what we do because not only is it a reflection of who we are as individuals, it's a reflection of Burkett and its commitment to quality. Burkett certified product is a unique 10 step reconditioning and testing process that restores previously used items by repairing or replacing any defective components upgrading cosmetics and giving you a quality ready to go reconditioned item hassle free every burkett certified product is guaranteed to be the best value in the industry at up to 75 percent off the price of a new item in addition most burkett certified products ship within 24 hours of purchase and is backed by an industry best 90-day parts and labor warranty refurbishing restaurant equipment is how we got our start in this business 40 years of evolving and perfecting the Burkett certified product process has made us a renowned leader in the industry. Now you might find refurbished restaurant equipment elsewhere, but nowhere is it going through the same rigorous testing that it goes through here at Burkett. So choose a company that not only stands by its products, but stands by its customers. Call us or visit Burkett.com today for exceptional service, every customer, every time. Well, I'm glad I muted myself there. I did laugh when uh, I was talking about quality testing and he was eating the ice cream. He's testing the crap out of that ice cream. <laughs> How are you supposed to test this equipment if you don't have to put product through it? That's why I, I love when we get ice cream machines in because we get to sample ice cream. Whenever there's pizza coming through, we get a lot of pizza. So it's like sure. It works before it leaves our facility. No, I, I get it. I'm working here. I'm working here. So, exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's great. I mean, that's something to look for is that, um, I mean, this is just an example. And we do want to thank Burkett for all the support they've given the U.S. pizza team um, for the like, past few years. And one of, one of the, the greatest things we have is that we have people like Nathan um, who come out, who are in person at our events and meet the people face to face so that we have a face to put with the company and we've already got that relationship. So now, again, Dan's calling Nathan up and getting everything fixed right away. So, Dan, I want to go with you real quick. Uh, a positive affirmation for the industry right now. You know, it's good. We're this close to 2021. This close. Um, it's been a hard year, especially for our industry. We've lost a couple greats, um, some friends and family. Um, but, I mean, what, what can we look forward to or what can we you tell the industry to, you know, kind of keep them going? Well, first things first is uh, you can't control what you can't control, right? So um, just stay positive, um, seize the day, like just don't turn down a great opportunity to listen to somebody, to help somebody. Um, but uh, most importantly, just don't, don't, don't walk away from your operation during tough times. Just stick it out where, where you know, especially in the pizza industry, we're, we're in such a great industry. I feel so blessed every day that we're in this industry because, uh, um, you know, although there's other restaurants out there struggling and I feel terrible for them, um, but uh, just don't give up. Um, 2021, hopefully will be a better year for all of us. Uh, hopefully we can overcome this pandemic and uh, return to somewhat of a normal life. But, uh, you know, just seize the day. Just uh, don't give up and stay positive and, uh, you know, um, leave the stress uh, at the door and enjoy your family, especially during these holidays. 
I, that's good. I mean, just be safe and uh, and make sure that you hug everyone you you love and every single day you can. So, Nathan, um, what do you have for the industry and just people in general, just to keep our hopes up? Because uh, we're you know light. There's light at the end of the tunnel, and it's going to get better for us all around. So. Yeah, I, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we're starting to see progress as, as a country, uh, as a nation uh, in the world. So it gives me hope that something's coming soon to create that normalcy again. And it'll be here sooner than later. Uh, don't give up. 2021 uh, is the year that everything's coming back. Uh, that's what I believe in my heart that everything's going to be coming back 2021 don't expect it january 1st um but just know that there are still a lot of people out there uh there's people struggling uh that are still getting by and they're getting by with asking for help and and, and working hard and, and making changes to their business to adapt and i think many of those changes are going to are going to be part of the new norm which is okay, uh, but they've been able to to maintain their business and to make sure that uh, they're leaving a better life for someone else, uh, whether it's a business that they're gonna pass down from family to family, generation to generation, um, and, and helping their staff and their, their team members. Uh, it's always, I, I've got a close friend that uh, is a business owner and, and she says, you know, it's not about me. It's about my team. I have 10 employees and they're all my family. So what happens out there impacts my family and they're all working so hard and being successful, which is two thumbs up. That is fantastic. Love to see it. And it's a, that, that affirmation of hope. It's out there. It's coming. And just keep your head up and Dan mentioned this is a great industry. There are so many people ask for help, ask just to talk. Talk doesn't cost anything. And we're all here to help support each other. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I just want to put on that is that, yes, we can rely on each other. It is going to get better. And uh, at this point, just let's be strong. Let's not waver. Um, like Dan said, be be strong and try to muscle through as best you can. If you can't ask for help, because there are people in this industry, especially pizza segment of the restaurant industry, who are there to help you. That's the one thing I know about, and Dan can attest to this, just with his U.S. pizza team members, yeah. how much they're willing to give. Literally, the jackets off their backs. I've seen it. So, oh yeah, I think I think Lamarca gets tired of me calling him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't because it's it's usually he, you get you call him after I call him and yell at him for no reason. I just I call him just to yell at him sometimes. It's fun. Uh, he's good to yell at. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I love uh, and I can understand from this not actually owning a pizzeria or having an operation, but just seeing the camaraderie of the U.S. pizza team there and seeing how much just watching the chats and how much these guys are helping each other, just regardless of what the question is. You give me something small and stupid. Now, don't get me wrong they will get made fun of. And I usually have to mute my phone every now and then because it goes on for hours. But there is that underlying, um, it's just a brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, just a, a family a fraternal group that we have. Um, we want to make you exceed as best you can. And I think that goes in competition as well as a lot of times it's that uh, what I've noticed in the U.S. pizza team is that they will give you the jacket off their back, the basil that they need to make sure that you do your best because, because they want when they win, they want to say they beat you when you were at your best. They don't want an asterisk, <laughs> asterisk next to the, the win. Right. But it, it, it all does come from a place of love. And that's what I've seen in this industry throughout, um, regardless of who it is, regardless of team affiliation. All of us. Um, it, I'm getting ready to cry here. I'm sorry. I'm all the club. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, okay, uh, Ryan. I, I look at it from an outsider's perspective. Um, you know, I, I got a good chance to meet up with uh, many members of the U.S. pizza team this past year in Columbus and, and sitting down after the uh, um, the Mid-America Restaurant Expo and, and just sitting down and just talking and listen to all these different business owners, one, badger each other, which was entertaining. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, 
the support of each other and thinking, wait, aren't they all competitors? But yes, it is the most friendly competition ever. It's the competition of life. We're here to support each other and make sure that we're all growing together. So I, it, it, I'm proud to be a part of it in some way. So thank you guys for your support and the confidence and growth. No, absolutely. And, and, um, especially like you were saying, just that overall support is that, um, everybody can learn from that in the rest of the restaurant industry. Like I said, it's the pizzeria segment that is very giving and cooperative and collaborative. So, uh, <laughs> Jason Wangs, he's got a, he's got a lot of, he's feeling what we're saying here. So, but I mean, <laughs> yes, uh, the restaurant industry, you know, you watch the shows, you know how chefs can be, they could be sniping and they could be manipulative and, and, and dirty, but, uh, the pizza guys, not that just is not a part of what we do. So I want to thank you guys both for your time today. I know we, uh, we kind of put this together last minute and you got my questions in the organized fashion. I don't know about an hour before we went on. So, um, I do appreciate you guys being professionals, ready to go, knowing your information um, and just all the overall information you have for the industry. So um, I look forward to having you guys back on in the future. Dan, this is probably what, your fourth, fifth appearance, something like that. Um, I think so. Yeah. Thank you, by the way. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're you're a pro. You know what you're doing. But I mean, it always just seems to come back around as, as the subject you know the subject matter. So, and Nathan, definitely, I want to thank you, Amber Kett, for being a, a, a good sponsor, a great sponsor for the U.S. Pizza team and putting your face out there. We only have a few sponsors who actually do that. I encourage more of our sponsors to do that. Send a representative to the events that we do when we can start doing them again in person. That's the biggest thing right now that we've not been able to do. So, um, but I am open to anybody uh, sponsoring the U.S. Pizza team to have a conversation like this about what you guys know about. So Nathan, uh, thank you again so much for your time. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming up there and doing some ghost hunting in the, in the woods of Ohio. It's going to be great. Dan, you can come. Yeah. Come on down, Dan. It'd be fun. Is it safe? Is it safe with you two there? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you putting this together. So yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Good talking to you. you guys. Thank you. Yep, Absolutely. Guys. So thank you, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. Um, we'll see you guys next time on the PMQ Live update. But I'm your host, Brian Hernandez, here with Nathan Buclair of Burkett and Dan Ocello of Flo's Restaurant Group. We'll see you guys next time.